I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and be glad. Come on, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. For the Lord is great and he is greatly to be praised. And so we praise God on this, the second Sunday of this month of August. Amen. This is our second time gathering and in-person worship. Last week, uh, the first Sunday, we were able to come in at 8 o'clock. This week again at 8 o'clock, we're coming in. Bless God. Let me tell you, the first draft run was pretty good. We got some things worked out. Uh, listen, let me apologize to my ushers for my getting excited about stuff, didn't get everything in place, but I guarantee today it is on, it is right. Everything is working well. Let me congratulate uh, my technicians, my my, my production team for all of the great and hard work that they have done to make sure that everything's going well. And thank the ushers, amen, as they got bombarded. Listen, our 8 o'clock has never been as populated as it was, and so you're coming in early and stuff. Listen, we're doing all of the month of August uh, in trial runs to get things established, and as the conditions improve, We'll move forward and see if we can't get back to our regular worship schedule. But until then, and I don't know because we're not rushing. Listen, this Delta variant is causing a lot of things. And with uh, Wallapalooza in Chicago and stuff, we're expecting a spike. And so we're taking it easy. We're taking our time to make sure things are going right. We're still wearing our masks. See? And, and we're still keeping our social distancing, washing our hands and being very careful because even though folk have been fully vaccinated, some people are experiencing uh, 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 con contact with, with the disease. So we have to be very careful. And so listen, my intent is to err on the side of safety, not against aggress aggressively trying to get into worship. And so please, ma'am, Please serve bear with us. I appreciate seeing you, but I want all of us to be healthy and safe and strong. And so we still got some caution. All this month of August, we're casual. Uh, as you can see, we're, we're taking it easy. We're in relaxed mode, but that doesn't mean that the message is relaxed. Uh, we're studying uh, resetting our times, and you need to, you need to be uh, uh, involved with this. You need to hear this, because how we appreciate and work with time will help us as we live in time. And so uh, come back after the praise team has sung and we'll get to our message. God bless you. Every step I take, every step I take. 
But come go away with me now to the Word of God. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24. Let me invite your attention to just this 14th verse. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I want to talk about resetting our time, but today our focus is when. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you now for the privilege of preaching your word. If it please you, preach me, that this people might be pushed from the, from the pressures of this life to the pleasure of knowing you and knowing you in the power of resurrection. Speak to me and through me. Be reckless even without my permission. I covenant with you in this company not to take credit, glory, nor honor, but I'll tell the world you did it and the power really does rest in you. Let the word of my mouth, yea, even the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my God, you are my strength, you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and thank God. Well now, at the point of departure, let me try and clear, uh, be as clear as I can about this month's theme. When I say resetting our time, I'm aware that we cannot change time. None of us has the ability to travel through time as in the many fictional stories we know, be it in a book or a movie or a television series or any other media. Time travel does not exist for us in this age. And so it is not a resetting of time that we change time by altering the events of yesterday or that we project into tomorrow and remove all obstacles. We can only reset time by the way we understand it and use it to enhance our lives here and now. We can learn from the events of yesterday and make tomorrow better. We can stop a cycle of non-productivity and start a new era of efficiency. And we can only do that by being informed, engaged, and involved. First, we need to be able to hear. Secondly, we need to be able to activate or be activated by what we hear. And finally, we need to be in relationship with others participating in a common goal or outcome for our own development. Uh, I almost messed that word up. Let, let, let me see if I can make sense of this in our text. When we arrive at Matthew chapter 24, we are at the end of Jesus' earthly mention. Uh, we, we come to the closing moments of his life here on planet Earth. Uh, he has come into the world without sin. He has lived a sinless life. He has confronted the powers of sin, and he has conquered the power of sin and Satan. He, he, he will pay the cost for our sins, and, and he's come into the world without sin. Yeah, 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 he's come into this world without sin. Uh, he is born of the Virgin Mary. Uh, the Holy Ghost overshadows her, and she conceives in her womb that which is holy God, and all men. He has lived a sinless life. Uh, uh, there is no sin or gal to be found in him. Uh, and he has to live a sinless life and be born without sin, for he must be the perfect sacrifice without spot or blemish. He has confronted the powers of sin. He's, he's healed all manner of disease. He, he's demonstrated his power over nature and challenges the religious rulers of his day. He has conquered the, the power of sin by showing man his real relationship to God and his fellow man. And he proves the true love of God. And he will pay the cost of sin at the cross on Calvary. Our text now takes place on the Tuesday uh, of the Passion Week. After being at the temple teaching and, and watching what folk give in their offering, as he leaves the temple grounds, his disciples want to take a tour of the various buildings of the temple. 
But Jesus says to them, these buildings will be knocked down with not one stone left on top of the other. And so they leave the temple. But later, as they sat on the slopes of the Mount of Olives, the disciples asked him, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your return and the end of the world? And you need to pay attention to what they asked him. It is not one question, but really two things they want to know. One, they want to know when will this happen? What is the time of these events? And then secondly, they want to know, what sign will we see before you return? What will be happening when the world comes to an end? And I see this as being two questions because we always ask too many questions. I've been taught that no uh, question is a bad question, but I also know that people ask too many questions because they fail to listen for the answer. If we would only listen to what is being said to us, there would be no need for so many questions. Most people do not hear what is being said to them. They hear what they expect to hear. The human mind works so fast that in conversations, we have already processed our response before the other person has given their complete statement. And the longer you know a person, the response is even quicker. That's why people who have been married for a long time finish each other's sentence. The disciples uh, would not have asked for a sign if they had only paid attention to what Jesus had said in Matthew 12, 38 through 40. It says that on a certain time, the scribes and the Pharisees asked, uh, saying to the master, said to Jesus, we would see a sign from thee. But Jesus answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And there shall be no sign given to you, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. If the disciples had paid attention, uh, they would have known not to ask for a sign. They knew that he had come to Jerusalem to die. It is, it is way back at Matthew chapter 16. Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they begin to say to him, some say thou art uh, uh, Elisha, some say thou art one of the prophets come back from the dead. But Jesus says to them, who do you say I am? And Peter gets an email from the Holy Ghost and, and speaks up, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus has to remind him, Don't get beside yourself, Peter. Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And upon that truth I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so uh, it is uh, uh, that, that they should know what Jesus is about. And, and so it is from that time uh, for Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and raised again on the third day. So they should not be surprised that he had said to them, don't let anyone fool you, for many shall come claiming to be the Messiah and will lead many astray. When you hear of war's beginning, this does not signal my return. These must come, but the end is not yet. He's answering them. They won't know when shall it happen. He says nation and kingdoms and, and kingdoms of the earth will rise against each other, and there will be famine and earthquake in many places. But all this will be only the beginning of the horrors to come. Then you will be tortured and killed and hated all over the world because you are mine. And many of you shall fall back into sin and betray and hate each other. 
and many false prophets will appear and lead many astray. Sin will be rampant, running all over the world, everywhere, and you and 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 the love of many will be cold, but but those enduring to the end shall be saved. And here it is, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the world so that all nations will hear it, and then finally the end will come. The disciples want to know two things. When will this happen? What is the time of this event? And secondly, what signs will they see before Jesus returns? What will be happening when the world comes to an end? Let me see if I can answer them, these two questions, in a reverse order. First, uh, what happens before the world comes to an end? Jesus says, take heed that no man deceive you. Don't be fooled. Don't, don't fall for the okie doke. It's at verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Verse 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye not be troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Verse 7 says, for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquake in diverse places. Verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrow. The world as we know it in modern times has seen war after war. World War I, World War II, Korea conflict, Vietnam, the Gulf Wars, war in Iraq and Afghanistan are still going on. There are ongoing conflicts between Israel and Iran and the government powers of Hamas, uh, Hezbollah, ISIS, and, and all of the other terror groups that, that have continually kept the Middle East in a state of turmoil. There is not a single nation on earth now that is not involved in some type of conflict, and it grows worse and worse each day. There is an increase in natural disasters, earthquakes in places not known before such activity, Hurricanes and tornadoes are occurring in England, China, Russia, and all parts of Europe that have never uh, had these types of extreme weather. Uh, just as an adult, I never heard as a child of a tsunami, but there are tsunamis that come and wipe whole villages out there, increase in floods, landslides, droughts, and fire, intense, intense heat in places nothing like it has ever been before, such as 100 and 115 degrees temperatures in Western Canada and in the Pacific Northwest, Washington and Oregon, climate changing, causing global warming, warming, excuse me, greenhouse of gases and effects and other pollutions, natural disasters of plants and animals causing us to deal with the reality of food shortages and famines, and what about our COVID-19 situation? The world uh, came to a, a standstill, and still in many states and countries are facing uh, troubled days with the increase of this Delta variant, and, and looks like if we're not careful, we'll be on lockdown again. And that's just the world. The, the church also faces at least four things that, that Jesus said would happen. Look at verse 9 of, of this 24th chapter. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake to be afflicted by persecution. Yes, and 
imprisonment, scourging, beat. Uh, 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 religious leaders will arrest believers and give them to their governing boards to to, to the great Sanhedrin court. They did it in Jesus' day. And Paul would let us from the, from the Sanhedrin, breathing out threats and slaughtering, dragging Christians into jail. This was fulfilled when Peter and John were brought uh, before them in Acts uh, chapter 4. Believers were delivered to the synagogue and Prisoners uh, uh, were beaten and brought before uh, the high priests and rulers and kings for testifying in the name of Jesus. All this was fulfilled. Peter and John in prison. Paul and Silas locked in jail. Uh, Paul was brought before Galileo, before Felix, before Agrippa, was stoned and left to die. J James was killed by Herod and believers were severely persecuted under uh, persecution before the destruction of Jerusalem. Peter and Paul and most of the apostles is, is believed to have died by persecution. And we will be hated of all nations. This has happened in all ages. It was treated as a, a crime to be a Christian. Multitudes for, uh, have died for this reason and for nothing else. Uh, were uh, people were put to death uh, because they are faith in Christ alone. Verse 10 says, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many shall stumble, many will quit, many will walk away. Many who have professed to love Jesus will show that they had no real attachment to him. And in these hard times, uh, it shows that they that don't hold out and don't, don't that had no real genuine love of Christ in the first place. They will betray one another just to secure their own safety. And they will tell and reveal the hiding places of believers. Verse 11 says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Many men pretend to be prophets or, or foretellers of the future, events, psychics and crystal ball gazers and, and, and seers and card readers and, and stargazers, many, many false prophets claiming to have a word that will help people, but it only destroys our confidence in God. And so at verse 12, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. There's a great falling away from the church. We don't love like we used to love. We don't share with one another. We don't protect each other because we're living in perilous times. Because the times are so bad, the days are so hard, people become insensitive. Call us uh, uh, crazy, but the world has become callous and unconcerned about the things of God. Verse 13 says, but he shall, he that endure shall the end, shall the same be saved. But those who hold out are delivered. For if you trust and never doubt, Jesus will surely bring you out. But all this is bad news. For the world and for them that do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior. But there is some good news. Yeah. The, the first question, number one, when, when will this happen? What is the time of these events? Verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then the end comes. And this was done for real. The evidence that it happened and that it was done is given to us in the history of the New Testament. Paul declares that it was preached unto every creature 
under heaven in first, no, not in first Corinthians, in Colossians chapter one that the faith of the Romans was spoken of throughout the whole world, Romans 1, that he preached in Arabia, that he was in Jerusalem and all around the world, and we know that he traveled through Asia Minor, Greece, Crete, and even into Italy and probably Spain. And at the same time, the other apostles were the, uh, not idle, but they also made full proof of their ministry. So much so that within 30 years after the prophecy that Jesus gives in Matthew 24, uh, it, uh, the church was established in all regions for a witness unto all nations. This preaching of the gospel to all the Gentiles was proof to them or a witness that the division between the Jew and Gentile was about to be broken down and that the blessings of, of Revelation had not been confined to the Jews alone, that Jesus had been the only peculiar, that, that, that listen, this proves that, that, that the Jews had not been the only peculiar people of God, but that God's message had been sent not only to them, but God had also sent the gospel to other peoples. It was a fact that the peculiar Jewish way of worship had come to an end, and that the end was that the ritual of Jewish worship and lifestyle uh, including the destruction of the temple and the city of Jerusalem. But what about us? When do we see an end to the violence in our cities? When do we see the end of social injustice, the end of racism, classism, and sexism? When will the end come for economic oppression, and man's inhumanity to his fellow man. When will the end come for black and brown people being hunted and killed in this nation? Because we're not born white, when will the end come for all church house pimps and storefront hustlers? When will the people of God be free to live and worship without fear? When will we be free from the pain and problems of this pandemic? These are the problems we face now. Well, when will we get an answer? When will Jesus come? When will we be carried away out of this unfriendly world? Jesus gave the disciples an answer, and that answer still rings true for us today. Matthew 24, 14 says, when this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. The scripture is clear when the gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed to all the world as a witness to all nations, then the end shall come. When the gospel of the kingdom is preached to all the world as a witness to all the nations of the world, and then the end comes. And so I'm trying to get you to understand if you're tired of the conditions that we're living under, if you're tired of, uh, of the crime that you see on your block, if you're tired of the conflict that you have in your spirit, if you're tired of, of, of not being able to trust your neighbor, if you're tired of not being safe in your own home, if you're tired of all of the stress and the strain of this life, then you need to help me get this good news out. Help me proclaim the glad story. Help me tell a dying world about a living Savior. His name is Jesus. He was born of the virgin named Mary. He grew up in Nazareth. He started a public ministry at 30, and for three and a half years, he did heal the sick. He raised the dead. He opened blinded eyes, and he straightened withered limbs. The lame walked, the blind did see, and the deaf did hear, but yet they lied on him. They stole him 
from his praying ground. They whipped him all night long. They got him outside the city and there they nailed his hands to an old rugged cross. They lifted him high and they dropped him low. He hung there between the sixth and the ninth hour. And then he folded his head in the locks of his shoulders. He, he gave up the ghost and he died. But he died like nobody else had ever died. Huh? Died until the sun refused to shine. Died till the moon ran down in blood. Died till stars fell from their silver socket. He died and the world reeled in rock. Dead men stood in the grave and those that crucified him said, truly, this was the Son of God. They buried him in a borrowed grave and they watched him three days and three nights. But on the third day morning, he got up without power in heaven and earth in his hands and then stayed around for 40 days and boarded a cloud, went back home, sits on the right hand of God. There he is now making intercession for you and I. And one of these days, he'll drop from bright glory. Every eye will see it. Every knee will bow. Now every tongue will confess that he's Lord. And when this gospel has been preached to all the world, when everyone has had a chance to know that Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth, will come back and receive us into his own. And then we'll go back to be with him. And every day will be Sunday. Every month, the month of May. And every year, the year of Jubilee. And every day as granny would say, will be howdy, howdy, howdy and no more goodbyes. Don't you wanna? Yeah, go to that land. I'm on my way. What about you? But we won't be able to get out of this world until this gospel, everybody won't be saved. Everybody won't be able to make it. Every, things won't change until this gospel has been preached to all the world for witness until everybody has had a chance to be saved. Won't you help me get it out now? As a matter of fact, uh, you listening to me now, if you've never made Christ Lord of your life, you can do it, even right now, and that will hasten the day. Why not make Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Why not open your mouth and confess with it that he's Lord. It's a simple act of obedience, faith in Christ, not a leap in the dark, but a sure walk into the presence of God. Come on, pray the sinner's prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe you are the Son of God. I confess, yes, I confess all of my sins. And I make you Lord. Thank you, Lord. For saving me is all you got to do. And he'll do it. This your hour, it's your time. Trust him now. Well, thank you for joining us. Listen, the disciples asked the Lord, when? When will all these things be? And what will be the end of the ages? And Jesus' answer is very simple to them. Uh, uh, when the gospel has been preached to all the world for witness, then the end comes. And so if you want to get out of this trouble, if you want all of the, the headache and the, 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 strom, the drama and trauma of life to end, if you want to live in the, the blessed peace that God has promised for his kingdom, then you need to help us get this gospel out to all the world. You can do that, guess how? By sharing with us. It's time to give the offering. What do we say? Trust the Lord. Every member, the tithing member, we need you to give uh, responsibly and, and, and uh, uh, liberally. Yeah, that's what we need to do. And you can do it three ways. You can uh, put it in the mail, uh, send it to Great Open Door, 1302 South Sawyer, Chicago, Illinois, 60623. Or you can go to the website, www.greateropendoor.com. Look for the donate button, hit it, and you'll be directed to PayPal. There you can use your bank card to give liberally. Then the most popular way, of course, is from your bank to our bank. Go to your Zelle at your bank and send it to Greater Open Door, the number one at AOL.com, and we'll receive it that way. Let me thank you for your liberal and faithful giving, and remember that God will bless a cheerful giver. As a matter of fact, when you give, 
God says, men will give unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Men will dump it in your lap. And so we want you to be blessed. Give as the Lord has prospered your way. Well, until next week uh, on these same platforms, we'll greet you and we'll share the word of God together. But until then, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance on you and give you peace. That is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Say, Praise Come on and lift your voice and say, Praise